Hey folks, today I'm going to show you how I um, stretch and install a go new goatskin head on an old banjo. Um, it's a thing I've done lots of times in the past, but I'm always getting a little bit better at it, so it um, should be pretty fun. Um, and uh, here is the old head that I took off. There's nothing that, that bad about it except that the uh, uh, old flesh hoop has really rusted a lot in there, and it's just old enough that I figure if I'm going to make a new neck for this old rim, I might as well put a good new head on it. So, um, and as you can see, this old banjo head had a round flesh hoop in there, which is pretty common um, on the old ones. Um, you'll see that I prefer to use square stock flesh hoop. So um, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Let me just adjust the camera so you can see down onto the bench. Bear with me. That should work pretty good. Okay, so here's the old rim. It's like a 10 and a quarter, 10 and a half, I think, uh, little spun over rim. It's really stout and heavy, and it's got really nice hardware on it, so I think it's going to sound pretty good. Um, here's the old tension hoop, and this is common for some of these older lightweight banjos. It's very thin, looks like, um, uh, like nickel silver, like what they make trumpets out of, and you can see the cool lap joint in the back with a couple rivets through it. It's a really strong way to make a hoop, actually. So I've got that, I've got my square stock uh, flesh hoop, and I've got the head. So first thing I did is I soaked this for a few hours in the sink, uh, just wrap up a towel and bring it back out to the shop. Uh, these square uh, flesh hoops, I make them myself, um, but you can get them from um, Smacula Banjos, Bob Smacula. Um, they're oversized when you get them from him, so you have to wrap it around here, see the length you want, and then cut it off. What I do is I cut it off with a hacksaw and then I grind or, or file the four, these edges so that they're not so sharp. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect that flesh hoop. Some in the past people soldered, some people like to use, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, heat flex tubing, like, like shrink, shrinkable tubing by heat, which I've done. But I actually just prefer really strong packing tape wrapped really tight. Um, I've found this to be the best low profile way to do it. It's obviously fast and inexpensive and it works like a charm. It also covers up those edges I already filed, but it's just an extra insurance. So here we go. You wanna pick a head that's um, uh, quite a bit bigger than the rim you're trying to stretch. This one's gonna be cutting it close so you guys can watch me struggle, but it's just the, the head I wanted to use for this banjo. I put the piece that I, um, connected there right at the neck. Some people put it under the tailpiece. And just slip it down so it's just pushing the head down a little bit. And now we can already we can start trying to stretch to make sure it's even. Now, whoops. Try again. There we go. Okay, so this is the notch where the strings go through. So I wanna make sure that that's pretty well lined up. We can adjust it a little bit later, but it's just nicer when it's easier. So start pulling up the skin. So this is where if you've got a, an oversized skin head, it really helps. This one is cutting it pretty close. And all I'm doing is just working my way around, pulling up the skin over the flesh hoop under the tension hoop. There we go. And the tricky thing is sometimes while you're doing this, it's undoing itself on the other side of the banjo. So you gotta keep watching. I have to go kind of back and forth, back and forth. Okay, so I'm going to try to line up that notch a little bit better. Let me move over here so you can see. So it's kind of just gently sitting on top of everything. It's not really doing much yet. This is when I'll try to pull up a couple hooks right here, get those in place, and then go to the opposite side of the banjo and try to pull down on this side and get at least, if I can, try to get one hook snagged. Let 
Might have to give it some slack. And I'm definitely not going for tight yet. We're just trying to get a couple hooks in place so we can pull it down. Go to squeeze. Okay, so now I got two over there, one over here, but it's not pulled down over here properly yet. So try to get one over here. Now, the hard part often is getting one on the other side. Basically, we got like four cardinal directions. If I can get one banjo on each or one hook on each side caught and make sure it's coming down evenly, we're good to go. So that's a little hard to do. I'm gonna grab a clamp. Not a lot of pressure, but just enough so I have a little bit of this thread out and I can... Got it. And I'll let up on the clamp. Okay, so we've got, um, what, six hooks holding things in place at the moment. I'm going to now take the time to look around the head. Like, see right here where it's kind of folded over? I'm going to try to straighten that out and pull it up if I can. It's really tight fit, tight fit in some of these spots, but any place that I can pull the head a little tighter and get rid of any creases or bubbles, this is the time to do it. So it's pretty tight, so I'm gonna try a new technique, new idea here. These are my soft jawed pliers. Cause I don't wanna, this is a pretty thick head. There you go. So watch this, when I pull on this, it kind of pulls the crease out and makes it tighter. This is a pretty thick head, so I can get away with doing this. If you're using a thin head, you might rip when you try to pull like this, which no bueno. I wonder if I can get this one out. Got it. I didn't think that was going to work. So more of that will come out later, but um, it's a good start. And I can already see that, um, like on this side, I have it pushed down pretty far, but this side is pretty high up. Um, so I'm going to loosen this one a touch so that it'll even out as we tighten, get the rest of the hooks going. Great. Okay, so this side was really high. It's gonna be hard to get other hooks on unless I crank it down a touch. So on these two, I'll give a few turns to these hooks. And now I'm gonna start doing the rest of the hooks, just sort of uh, what I would call finger tight. We're not trying to stretch the head right now. We're just trying to get everything even so it can dry itself tight and we'll have to turn the hooks a little bit later. So just thumb tight. Yeah, and sometimes with this part, if there's an old hook that's bent or a little hard to use, I'll leave it off because we don't need all of them right now. I was talking to my friend Brooks Mastin about the hardware on this um, we we're texting with my friend Brooks about the hardware on this one. Here's one that needs to be replaced, but you can see they're nice little ball shoes and they have an, a cool domed washer. Um, and I think he thought this might be a higher end Buckbee instrument. Oh, and this one, need to tighten on the inside. Mm, let's see. I'm gonna have to take that one apart when we redo the rest of this stuff here. planning to build a new neck for this instrument or for this rim I think it'll sound good be nice and lightweight probably a nylon string instrument maybe short scale ok 
Okay, almost there for now. So since my flesh hoop, that brass flesh hoop I put underneath is a little stouter than the original, some of these hooks are having trouble going up and over it. Um, and with ball shoes, often the hooks that go up and over are have a bend to them. So I might have to go back and do that later. We'll see. We can just get a couple more on. Okay. So when I look around, I'm kind of looking at the height of the flesh hoop over the instrument. It's pretty high over here and pretty low over here. So what will probably happen is when we actually tighten the head later, the lower side over here, I won't touch and I'll just get all the action from this higher side just to even it out. Um, so last chance, if you can pull any more of these tight, any areas of this tight, it's a good time to go for it. I don't really like this crease here, but I think I'm gonna have to be stuck with it without taking the whole thing apart. And it's okay, it's just, you wanna do your best. Because after it dries, there's no chance. So, and I actually like to trim the extra off when it's wet. Some people do it when it's dry. So, um, I just use an exacto. Um, there we go. And I don't have a problem with leaving a razor mark on the inside of the tension hoop because it gets lowered below where you can see it later anyway. I have tried it like Jason Romero, where you put a protective brass piece behind your blade, and I just couldn't get it to work. I might practice harder and be more like Jason someday, but you've got to be careful not to actually cut the head. You can use a just a razor blade for this too, if you want. Like, like this works pretty good too. Yeah, it looks like this tension hoop is actually nickel plated brass. I see a, in that where the cutout is done right here, it's brass inside. Makes sense. Okay. So for now, that's it for now. We're gonna come back later after it's had a chance to dry and do some more stuff. So give me a couple days. Okay, so it's been 24 hours um, and the skin has been drying. As you can see without tightening the wrenches anymore, sorry, the um, nuts anymore, it's still dried to a good pitch. So at this time, what I'm gonna do is push on it and stretch it a little bit more. And here how the pitch goes down now. So it's good to get that out of the way now instead of later. And then what I usually do is I'm not going for a full tightening of the head right now. I'm just gonna even up that tension hoop a little bit. So just tighten on the one side that we talked about yesterday. And I'm not trying to line up the hooks or anything right now, I'm just Roughly starting to even it out. Okay, now I'm gonna get out. Um, this is some oil and oil and poly mix finish called Armor Seal. This is what I use on my instruments as well. Um, I'm just gonna put a little bit of finish on the inside of the outside of the head and let it dry another day. And um, some folks don't do this at all because they say well it's still going to absorb humidity and stuff even if you put this on some folks say no you have to do this it's like waterproofing your boots um i think it's a good idea it's not really a big hardship to do it and it dries fast and it but it also makes the grain look nicer it's hard there you go 
So I mean, it just makes it look nicer just by, it's like oiling the wood. The wood looks nicer when you oil it too. So suddenly what looked like just a white disc now gains all this character. And it's only one coat, it soaks in easy. Soaks in fast and it dries overnight. And um, I think it's a good plan. So just wipe the extra off. cool okay and we'll be back tomorrow to do more hey friends we're on day three of stretching this skin head and you can see how much higher the pitch is now too it's really stretching well the oil is dried and it looks great um so what all i'm going to do today is uh give a little more uh tightening of the head with our wrench and then I'm going to take it in the house to hang out. Um, I found that uh, these heads acclimate well when I try to give them um, multiple climactic conditions to hang out in. So I might take it in kind of, you know, in the corner by the wood stove. I might bring it back in the shop. I might put it on the windowsill to get some hot sun. Um, you know, trying to kind of imagine its future life being hot and cold, wet and dry within reason. Um, so that we can get some of that stretch and play out before it goes to you. Um, and I think that's pretty helpful. So I'm just doing like a half turn on all these keys again. And now... So yeah, so this will be it for uh, video evidence until I actually make a neck for this rim. It's just going to hang out for a while and uh, keep stretching. Cheers. Cheers.